What's going on everyone? I want to welcome you to this episode of Big Man Overland where I'm going to be talking about five upgrades that I think you should do to your Jeep right now and two that I think you should just avoid and not spend your money on. Stay tuned. All right. I want to welcome everyone to this episode. If this is your first time watching Big Man Overland, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and joining us. We do a lot of product reviews around overlanding and for Jeeps in particular. So we'd love for you to like, share, and make sure that you subscribe to this video so you can keep up to date and up to speed with everything that we're doing around here. Now, the nice thing about a Jeep Wrangler is it is one of the most customizable vehicles that you can own. I mean, you can get new tires and wheels, you can get new suspension, which of course you can do that on all of the cars, but you're not going to put a two and a half inch lift kit on a Toyota Prius. At least, I hope you don't. You can do all those things. You can buy lights for it. You can install a kitchen in the back of your Jeep like I've done. Rooftop tents and awnings and so many different things. If you get bored with your Jeep, you just buy something new and it completely makes it a whole new vehicle, which is something that I love. And so I've done a lot of upgrades to this Jeep. It's a 2010 JKU Sport. So it's nothing fancy, but I'm slowly turning it into something that's pretty, in my opinion, remarkable. Um, so we're not going to talk about the typical upgrades or things that we've talked about in other videos. We're not going to talk about lights. We're not talking about fridges or awnings or roof racks or tents or tires and suspension, things like that. Feel free to look through my old videos and you'll see all those. We're going to be talking about inside upgrades, things that make the cabin just a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more enjoyable. And two of those things are right here up front. Now, one of them is typical. You may already have them, but if not, you should get them. Grab handles. Got them for the driver's side, passenger side, and for the back seat. Why? Because when you do a lift kit, these things can be a little hard to get into, especially if you take the running boards off and you just put on rock sliders, you don't have a step to come into. So get yourself a good quality pair of grab handles. I'll link these ones below in the description. Another thing that you should get, an arm rest cushion extension. This thing, I love it. It's extremely comfortable. Now, the one that comes on the Jeep Wrangler, hard plastic, low profile, you're leaning over. For me, it's just not something I enjoy. So you can get this, which is a gel foam cushion that attaches this with two screws. That's all it is, a Phillips head, Phillips head, and then two in the back here. Nothing major to do there. Put it on and you get yourself like another three inches of armrest that's soft. By far one of my most comfortable upgrades I've done in this Jeep. Now, one of the next interior upgrades that I think every Jeep owner should do is upgrade your back seat. Now, I'm not talking about getting a brand new back seat. I'm talking about making this seat more comfortable. When you get it from the factory, it's a straight 90 degree angle of a seat. Like, nobody wants to sit in it. And you don't have a whole lot of leg room. Now, something that you can get is a recline kit for your back seat. Now, if you're gonna do a seat delete and you're doing a goose gear plate system and all that kind of stuff, then obviously this isn't gonna be for you. But I still take kids to and from school. I have passengers that ride in the back. When I go camping, usually I'm taking another one or two people with me and they're sitting in the back if someone's already in the front. So the recline kit gives you a little bit more of an angle, but it also adds some leg room into your back seat. It's really nice to have, really comfortable. It's just these simple little blocks that you un uh, install underneath. So you got about eight bolts to your loosening. You're putting in these spacer blocks, retightening those bolts, super easy. By far one of my favorite upgrades for my Jeep has been my tailgate table by Frontrunner. Uh, now there's different options out there, obviously some are more expensive than others. I wanted to make sure that I had a solid metal surface and then I wanted to have the extended table. You can get wood or plastic with this uh, brand. And so this easily attaches just four bolts, no problem. and. Uh, it dramatically changes your kitchen setup for your Jeep. So this is definitely an upgrade that I think you should do right away. Now, one of the downfalls of the Jeep is power. 
you know, you've got your cigarette lighters up front, um, and at least in older Jeeps, you don't have any power in the back. And so an upgrade that I think you need to do is you need to run some auxiliary power to your cargo area in the back of your Jeep. The reason why you can run your fridge off of it, you can be powering other equipment off of it, you can uh, power plug-in lights off of it, you can charge battery banks, all sorts of different things. Um, so I used it to charge my fridge or to power my fridge while we're driving and traveling. And then when we park, I unplug it and plug it into our Goal Zero battery bank. Um, so I do that. Now I also run camera gear on it. So I'll plug my drone in while we're flying or not flying, driving. Um, and so it's a really easy upgrade. It's like 15 bucks uh, or 20 bucks for uh, the power uh, console or the power deck. And then you just gotta get your wires and run it. So really easy upgrade, really low cost upgrade uh, that I think you should do. Now there's two upgrades that a lot of people do that I have done and I regret doing. So these are two that I think you should avoid and they are all right here in the driver's seat. And the first one is a throttle controller. I bought the iDrive throttle controller thinking, oh, this is going to be such an awesome upgrade. I'm going to be able to go faster. I'm going to be able to get off the line quicker, all those sorts of things. And while some of that is true, it's really just a big waste of money. You have to accept if you're driving a Jeep that you drive a box on wheels. You are not meant to be aerodynamic. You are not meant to go quick. And so save yourself $150 and do not get a throttle controller. It is an easy install and it's going to be fun for the first week or two, but then you look at your gas mileage and what your MPGs are. I went from almost 17 miles to the gallon down to 10 miles to the gallon. I nearly cut my gas in half. Stupid. It's just not worth it. So avoid it. Don't spend your money on it, it's a waste of time. The second one is a $100 upgrade that I thought would be great, and that is Remote Start. Now, if your Jeep has Remote Start already in it, great, I'm glad. I bought a 15 minute install kit, um, which really was 15 minutes to install it, and it worked really well, probably for about a month. And what you do is you press the lock button on your key fob, you use your factory keys, lock button three times, and it's supposed to start. Well, more often than not, when I do the three, it will cause my alarm to go off, and then I'll turn the car on, and then my engine light's on probably for the next two days uh, until it realizes, oh, there's nothing wrong, I'm fine. So, remote start, it's a cool feature to have. There's no doubt about it. That's why I got it. Uh, I live in Colorado, it gets cold, I take kids to school in the morning when it's snowy and icy and freezing. It was a nice upgrade to have, but the 15 minute install one is not. Avoid that one. If you're gonna do a remote start, go to an installer and buy a more expensive unit. Uh, the only downfall is most of those don't work with your factory keys. And so then you're just adding more things to your key ring and me. I don't like to do that. I just like my key and a work key and a house key and then I'm done. So those are my two upgrades that I would say you avoid at all costs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of Big Man Overland as we looked at five upgrades I think you should do right now and two that I think you should avoid at all costs. If you like this video, make sure you press the like button, share it, and make sure you subscribe for more upcoming content. As always, adventure is calling. Are you gonna answer?